supply and demand. In this video, I'm going to discuss meeting our body's energy demands and what happens if you fail to meet them. As I've mentioned before, eating small and frequent meals is a great strategy that can help our bodies to meet our supply and demand requirements. A good analogy is to think of your body as if it were a business. A business is only successful if you're able to match the supply with the demands of a product. Similarly, your body's performance depends on matching the supply of energy with the demand for energy. By supply, we mean energy that's going into the body in the form of a calorie. A calorie is a unit of energy. Therefore, anything that contains a calorie can provide the body with energy. Now, the issue for most people is that they don't supply the body with the energy that it needs when it needs it. A good example of this would be if you had a meeting scheduled, let's say 9 a.m., and you expect that it's gonna run for an hour, an hour and a half, so let's say 10.30 a.m. for argument's sake. But in fact, it ends up overrunning. It goes to 12 p.m. By 10 a.m., you're already feeling your stomach growling, you've got the hunger cues going, and you're starting to feel a little bit shaky. So just imagine how you'll feel by the time it gets to 12 p.m. You'll certainly be feeling far from your best. How much of the meeting do you think you would have actually really been fully present in after 10 a.m. once you started to feel those hunger cues? Not much of it, I would imagine. By 12 p.m., I can imagine some common feelings would be lightheadedness, fatigue, hungry or hangry, which is where we feel irritable because we're hungry, and shaky and just disengaged. At this stage, essentially your physical, mental and emotional energy is all compromised. So let's try and explain exactly what's going on inside the body. Now, our body prefers to get its energy from external sources, so that's food. In some situations where there is a limited supply of food or fuel, the body's going to rely on its internal supplies to fuel the body. Your body stores and uses energy from three different internal locations, which each have different energy values and functions within the body. These three locations are your liver, muscle, and fat cells. For the liver, we're referring to liver glycogen, or carbohydrate that's stored in the liver. It provides four calories per gram and is mostly used during times of fasting. So actually, like when you're asleep, for example, most of it is actually used up by the time you wake up in the morning. Muscle, when talking about muscle, we're referring to carbohydrates stored within the muscle, otherwise known as muscle glycogen, is the second internal supplier and also provides four calories per gram. Energy can be provided here by either the breakdown of muscle protein or muscle glycogen. Muscle protein, we're, referring to, we're actually referring to breaking down of muscle tissue, and that's definitely something that we don't want to happen. Our muscle tissue is very precious because it needs energy to function properly. It can also be used as an energy source when the body has to rely on an internal supply of energy versus an external supply of energy from food. Now, the body will use muscle glycogen before it goes for muscle protein. Fat. Fat is the third internal supplier of energy. It gives us a whopping nine calories per gram. That's more than double than carbohydrate and protein. It has a very energy dense internal supply of energy. If we don't provide our body with energy from external sources for extended periods of time, our body's going to adapt by slowing down our metabolism and preserving fat stores so that it can maintain a certain level of its internal energy supply and also be able to meet future demands of energy. When we're hungry, our body's going to decide how, it's, how it will meet its energy demands. Initially, it will use stored liver glycogen and then muscle glycogen to get by. It will also start sending signals to the brain telling it that it needs to find an appropriate external supply of energy as soon as possible. And here we have what we know as cravings. At this stage, our body wants foods that will give us both fast energy and also energy that's going to last us. So of course, we're gonna go for foods that are high in sugar, fat, and salt. Salt doesn't actually have any calories. So we don't crave it for energy, but we may crave it for taste, as well as craving for foods high in carbohydrates 
and fat that also happen to be salty. Sugar gives us a fast source of energy by putting glucose into our bloodstream. Fat gives longer lasting energy. It's slower for our bodies to digest and won't be used up so quickly. So the message here is to ensure that you match your supply with your demand. You should aim to eat every three hours and bridge gaps with small snacks of around 150 calories. My advice is to have a look at your energy demands for the day and chart a graph to see when you're most in need of energy and when you will need the least. So here's an example. Your day plan is to do a workout in the morning, 7 a.m. You've got a lunch time, you've got a mid-morning meeting in which you're gonna to need to think um, quite clearly. Um, you've got a quiet afternoon and then you're gonna play with your kids in the evening before going to bed. So your, your demand chart is gonna look something like this. It's gonna come up in the morning for the workout. It's gonna go back down a little bit as you get ready for work. It's gonna come back up for the meeting because you need mental energy. In the afternoon, you haven't got much on. So your energy demands are a little lower and then you need some energy to be able to engage with your family in the evening. So you're gonna have a slight um, increase in energy demand there and then it's going to drop off. So that's a good way of planning out your energy intake for the day is by actually looking at where your energy demands are going to be. This is the logical way to do it. In the next video I'm going to discuss what happens when you overeat because you are so hungry from not eating enough earlier and not planning out your energy intake properly. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you soon.